Hello, how's everybody doing today? Today what we're going to talk about is using Lightroom to dodge and burn a photograph using masks. Now dodging burning is not a new concept. It's been around a long time in the analog film days. It was kind of made famous by Ansel Adams. He was real famous for getting in the dark room and dodging and burning his photographs to give it better contrast, to give it a more uh, give it more depth and a, a 3D feel of his photographs. Uh, in case uh, you're not familiar with the concept of dodging and burning, let me just grab a, a brush here real quick. When we dodge a photograph, it means that we are adding light to a, par a portion of the photograph. So as I brush my brush across this part of the, the photograph, you can see it's lightening up. That's what we call dodging. Burning would be just the opposite. By burning, it means that we are affecting that area of the picture by darkening it. So you can see I've gone over the dodged areas with a burn brush, and we're making the areas darker. So by dodging and burning, we create areas of contrast that makes a flat image like this appear to be more three-dimensional and more pleasing to the eye. So let's reset this. Now, when we use a mask in our dodging and burning, we define an area with our mask that we want to affect. So when we're dodging or burning, we only affect that area we have masked. That allows us to hit specific areas, like right here with these uh, leaves on this, on this branch right here. If we wanted to affect just these green leaves, if we used a brush, it'd be kind of really hard to brush here without affecting the areas around it. But if we put a mask on, only the areas that are masked will be affected when we brush it. So that's the power of using masking when we're dodging and burning. Well, let's jump right in and try this on this picture here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I always go to my lens corrections and I use uh, chromatic aberration and my lens profile. Once I have that, I go to my basic and I choose auto so I can get a look at what uh, Lightroom does to try to even up the histogram. I happen to think this is a little bright so I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit, give it a little contrast, I'm going to take away some of those highlights and give it a little bit more uh, uh, shadow so we can see into the darker areas here. The next thing I want to do is I want to straighten the photograph because it's a little crooked. That looks pretty good. Now we have a photograph to start with. When I first look at a photograph, and I know I'm going to be dodging and burning, I want to look at the areas that I know I want to affect. So in this picture, I know I want to affect these areas of the grass, the very tops, because the sun's hitting them, and it should be a little brighter and should be a little yellower from the early morning sun. Also, these reeds were, uh, had a lot more color to them than in this photograph, so it's making the whole picture look flat. So I want to increase the contrast and color and brightness in these reeds. I also want to increase the brightness of these limbs because they are brighter than what they're appearing here. And I want some contrast between these reeds and these limbs to give the picture a little more depth. Then we'll kind of finish up with maybe some brightening of the foliage up here at the top and maybe clearing up some shadows down here in the bottom to give us more contrast and maybe a little more reflection. All right, knowing all that, let's start in on our masking. So we want to mask this area right here so that when we use our brush to change the exposure that we're not affecting other parts of the picture. And we do that with a color mask. So I'm going to grab masking, color range. I get a color picker here and I'm going to pick a color that's kind of representative of the area I want to work. It turns on the overlay and we can see that everything in magenta is going to be affected. Now you also see it's showing some areas up here and we could refine it to take those areas out but because it's really way up here and all we're going to be doing is working down here I'm not really concerned about that. If this was something I wanted to change differently than this area then I would be concerned but there's so much distance in between I'm happy with what I have here. And also you can see we won't be affecting anything in this area and maybe just a little bit down in the reeds down here. 
I'll turn the filter, uh, the refine up a little bit so we can see we're going to be working in this area and maybe making a little change down here. Now to make those changes, once we've defined our mask, we want to make it intersect with a brush. So we come up here to our mask and we go intersect mask with the brush. Now our brush is going to be 100% feather, which means that it has a, a wide feather, so it's a soft brush. And I have it set the flow at 35%. So that means each time that I brush across this area, it's only going to put 35% of the effect in. And I want to increase the exposure. So let's bring this up a little bit and we'll see. This is kind of a preview of what's going to happen. Not too much. And I want to make it a little more yellow, and I want to give it a little more clarity. All right. So once we start brushing, all this uh, modification that we made will disappear, and it will only apply 35% 35, 35 of each brush stroke as I go across. So if I start brushing, you can see that every time I make a stroke across the area, I get an increase in exposure and I can go other places like here in the reeds nothing's happening here because it wasn't part of the mask down here not part of the mask so it won't make any changes we can even go across the bird it won't increase the exposure of the bird because the bird wasn't part of the mask so this allows us to just hit the areas that we want and increase the exposure to the a level that we want now once you have this the way uh, uh, painted in the way you want, you still have control with the exposure slider. So we've defined what we want to change and where we want to change. Now we can go in here and actually make some changes. Maybe add a little more temperature here. And I'm going to make this a little more extreme than normal because it's hard for you to see this in the video. You can't see changes very well. So this might be a little more extreme than what you probably would do in real life. So we're going to take it to about right there. Now if we look at the before and after of this mask, you can see it's made a nice change. It's highlighted that grass. All right, so we've got that. Now next, I'm going to say this is the grass. So we can keep track of what our masks are. Now we want to make a new mask on color uh, change and we're going to be hitting these reeds. So we create a new mask, color range. I want to get in here and pick just the color that I think I want to affect. All right. So as you can see, we have now selected just about every part of these reeds. And like, like we did before, we could refine it so we get less of these tops here. Let's say we don't want to affect that. All right. So we've refined our mask. Only the areas in magenta will be affected. These green blades of grass here won't be touched. That's the power of using masking when you're doing your dodging and burning. So I'll go to my exposure slider. I'm going to bring these up a little bit. I'm going to go and make them a little warmer. See, so it gives them a little color there. Give it a little more contrast and definitely some more clarity. Let's bring the exposure down just a little bit. All right, now we want to intersect with our brush and we want to paint on what we want to change. All right, so as I start to brush, you can see all that color that we were seeing earlier goes away. Now I can just take my time and color in those areas that I think need to be affected. Now I'm kind of going to go real quick. And as you can tell, it's not changing the color of the green leaves. We can come up here. Any place with that that brown is it? We're not affecting. It's just a good way to bring in a good dodge or burn without affecting everything around it. And with all the the leaves and everything around these reeds, it would be real hard just to get in here with a brush and paint just them. All right, I probably could do a little better, but for the sake of time. We're going to call this done. Now if we look at this brush here, let's rename this and we're going to call this reeds. 
if we turn this off and on you can see what's affected let me turn up the exposure so you can see it even better so if I turn the mask off mask on mask off now let's bring it back to a real level <laughs> and give it a little more color maybe a little more saturation right there now the next thing I want to do is I want to hit these leaves and make them pop a little bit more so we have more contrast between the reeds and the leaves so again we're going to go up to new mask we're going to go to color range I'm going to blow up this picture just a little bit so I can get right in on these leaves I'm going to click right here on this leaf all right so now we have these leaves that are in magenta and we can refine it a little bit so that we're just hitting those and nothing else all right now let's grab our exposure we can bring them up a little bit let's maybe make them a little greener with our tint maybe give them a little texture a little clarity maybe just a little more temperature so you can see what we're changing here a little more contrast all right so now i'm going to go to this mask and this is our we'll call this the green leaves and we'll intersect this with our brush again 35 percent with a wide feather and as I start brushing, all this change that we put in effect will go away. And the only thing that will be applied is what we brush on. So I'm just going to go across all this area. And apply the dodge to these leaves. Now, if 35% is not enough and you just want to hit it harder, you can always uh, change it to a, a different level like 50% or 100% and every time you swipe it you get 100% of the effect in there. But it, you'll notice that uh, when I'm down here it's not making any changes to speak of uh, because that wasn't part of the mask. There's a little bit of the mask in there but for the most part that's it. So now if we turn this off and on you can see just those leaves in there got the effect. And if that's too much exposure, you have the ability to change it right here too now. We're going to leave it a little high so we can see what we're doing. The next thing I want to do is I want to hit the tops of these leaves up here. I'm going to create a new mask, color range. I'm going to pick this color here. I'm going to refine it just a little bit. And all we're going to do is run our brush right across the top here. So we'll say top leaves. Say OK, intersect with a brush. I'm going to put the flow a little higher so we can move quicker, like at 50%. And all I'm going to do is start brushing. I have the overlay on. Let me turn the overlay off so you can see this. Now what I want to do is I want to lighten up these, this area here. Now I don't need a mask because I'm just going to use a brush and I'm just going to brush across this area and lighten it up. So I want to create a new brush. I want a little more exposure. I want some clarity. And we can always change this once we put the brush across it. And we're just going to lightly brush across here. So you can see it's lightening up the area. It's giving us a little more reflection. If we turn on the overlay, you can see this is the area that we're affecting. If we turn off the effect, you see, here's the light. Here's the original. And here's the, how it is now. Okay. One of the last things I want to do is I just want to affect some of these little 
uh, grass leaves in here that have their special color of gold in them. I'm going to zoom in using my Control Plus. I'm going to grab my uh, color range picker and I'm just going to pick this gold area right here. When we do that, you see the magenta is only showing those areas that have that gold. And if it is too much, we just refine it. So we're only hitting several pieces. Now also you can see we're going to be hitting some of this reflection, which is pretty good. We want that to be a lot like what it's reflecting from. So I'm going to grab my exposure. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit, not a lot. Give it some contrast. Give it some texture and maybe just a little clarity. And then I'm going to intersect with my brush and I'm just going to start brushing on. So as I start brushing here, see how it's lightening up the reflection? And again, like I said, I usually wouldn't put this much effect on, but it's easier for you to see it in the video if I go just a little overboard. So as I go across here, all it's hitting is the gold. It's not hitting anything else. All right, let me zoom back out. And if we turn this mask off and on, you can see how the grass down in the reflection is lit up and the yellow parts of the grass in here are lit up. So we've put quite a few masks on here. Uh, but it has made a big difference. So now let me turn the max off and the masks on. And see how we have depth, especially in here. You actually have, looks like we have some depth between the reeds and the leaves. Again, masks on, masks off. I might finish up with this. We'll turn off our mask, get the effects, and we'll use our vignette. Bring that in a little bit. Use your midpoint to soften out the edges and the feather to bring all the edges in smooth. So if we look at our vignette, here's without the vignette, here's with the vignette. And it kind of draws the viewer's eyes right into what we want them to see. Now, I'll give you an extra tip here. If you wanted to do a little change with the bird, all you have to do is come up to your masking brush and you want to uh, create a new mask and you want to select the subject it'll pick your bird and if we use the bird and just tone it down just a little bit make the exposure down like this and give it a little more contrast maybe take the highlights down you can start to see some definition in the bird's feathers because it was kind of bright you don't want it to take the exposure down too much because then you start introducing some blues in there. If we take the tent up just a little bit, we can bring the exposure down. Maybe a little clarity. And here's our before. And here's our after. So we have a little more definition in our bird. So zoom back out. Close our masking area. Look at our before, after before, after. So using our mask to do some targeted color uh, dodge and burning, we can affect several areas of the photograph without running over into like from the browns to the greens, the greens to the brown, the water and the leaves, or the grass. Just a good way to make some good targeted adjustments and give your picture more depth, more contrast and more pleasing to the eye to the viewer. I hope this helps you out in your pictures. If you need any help with any of these concepts or any of these tools, be sure and let me know and I'll be glad to help. Thanks.